casualties of the upgrade to Pixelmator 2 was the swatches palette, which sadly is no longer with us. We still have the color palette, but as you can see, the color palette is the default OS X color palette. Firstly, it doesn't really fit very well with the rest of the interface. And secondly, it doesn't replace the functionality of the swatches palette. But it's there, so how do you use that? Well, very, very simple. It's a simple matter of choosing the colour that you want, which changes the bar here. It also changes, depending on what tool you have selected, the colour well within the window itself. So as I click from colour to colour, you will see that that changes in there. Now, one of the other things that's missing from Pixelmator 2 is an interface to access foreground and background colours. What we used to have was at the bottom of the tools panel, we had two colour car parks, one for the foreground colour, one for the background colour. That is no longer there, but the functionality still exists. So as I'm clicking in this colour palette here, and I'm choosing this nice bright green, that is putting that on my foreground colour. But I can switch between my foreground colour and my background colour using the default keyboard shortcuts, which are the same as they've always been. The thing is now, if you don't know they're there, you're going to have a potential problem accessing them and using them. So let's see how they work first of all. Well, you have a foreground colour, you have a background colour. By default, those colours are black and white. To set the default colours, you simply press D on the keyboard. What happens then is the colour palette here changes to black, the colour well at the top changes to black, but it has also set the background colour. Now, there is no way to see that unless you use the X key, which will switch the palette between the foreground colour and the background colour. So pressing X switches your colours. You do get that feedback in the window, so that's very handy to see, but that is the only interface that you have to it. So D to set the default colours and X to switch between them. So I'm going to press X again and move back, so now I know that I'm looking at my foreground colour. So I change the colours in here, simple as that, if I then press X, it will take me to my background colour and I can choose a completely different colour to have as my background colour. So I have magenta on the background colour and I have spring green on the foreground. And if I click there and press X, switch between them, you can see that that is exactly what happens. It switches between my foreground and background colour. So that is the foreground and background colour options that you have. But you've still got problems with this colour picker. It's very limited by comparison to the old swatches palette. You can choose colours and you can open it up at the bottom, as you see, pull down as far as you can, and you do have some colour wells or colour car parks where you can choose a colour, you can make some changes to that colour, so change it fractionally, and when you're done, you can drag and drop a colour down into there and it will save it for future use. So that, in a way, extends the foreground and background colour options that you have. The problem with this is, though, that it's not very advanced. It has no management options other than what you see there. If I wanted to move that, I could move it. If I wanted to delete it, I'd have to choose white. So I'd have to go up here and choose white and then drag and drop that down and cover it up. So the management options are very, very limited. More significantly, there's very little you can do in the way of sharing colours. Although this colour palette is global across the operating system, which means I could share colours from Pixelmator and share them in with Keynote or Pages or anything else, what I can't do is share them between machines very easily. There isn't an interface to say, just save me these six colours and then I can send them across to a colleague to work with the same artwork. There's no option for that. One option to remedy that is to use another application to provide the swatches functionality. And the application that I have selected is this one, which is Colour Schema Studio. Now, by comparison to Pixelmator, it's actually quite expensive, but it does do a very good job. And the feature set that I'm going to demonstrate in this video is just a small fraction of what this can actually do. It is a fully featured colour management application. But I'm only going to focus on how I could replace the swatches palette functionality within Pixelmator using Colour Schema Studio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this down to, mm, as you see, the interface is quite large. That's as small as it goes. So I'm just going to move it down there and hopefully I'll be able to see enough of it and the Pixelmator interface for this to make sense. So how I would use this with Pixelmator 
is I'd activate Pixelmator and you can see I can't see all the interface, not by a long way. I could of course choose to move my graphic if I wanted to work with colours better, but I need to see my graphic there. So all I have to do in here is choose a colour. Now I can choose from the colour wheel or I can choose from one of the palettes. So let's go from the colour wheel at the moment. And I have two options. I can either pick up that colour and drag it to the colour palette and that changes the colour in the colour palette. Or I can, I'm just going to change that, let's go for the purple, activate pixel later, drag that straight up to the colour well within the window and that also has the same effect. So as you can see, get the yellow, drag it up there, click, purple, pink, whatever I need and it's working. That's a way to access more saved colours. Now obviously what I've done there is just drag them off that colour wheel and they are just any colours. Now, what I can do when I'm working, if you activate Colour Schema Studio again, if I'm working with these nice pastel shades and I'd like access to all of them at various times without having to go and reset them using the sliders or pasting in RGB values, then what I can do with Colour Schema Studio is drag and drop colours over to this side here and it will save them for me. So I'm building up a colour palette. I can get more complicated with that, creating folders and structures and all sorts of things. I can pull those colours in from places. Like I say, Colour Schema Studio is a fully featured colour management application. I'm only trying to replicate a little bit of functionality with it in Pixelmator at the moment. So I'm going to move that across so I can just about see it when I go back to Pixelmator. And now I can drag and drop these not quite as integrated as the old swatches palette, but certainly a lot better than only having the two and that colour palette to work with. So that's one thing that I can do with Colour Schema Studio. But better still, I talked about sharing colour palettes. And that's one of the things that if you're working with Photoshop, you just do on a regular basis. And there is no option at the moment within Pixelmator to replicate that. But here is a bit of a workaround. Within Colour Schema Studio, I have at the bottom here a WebSafe palette. I can choose other palettes, so I could choose a Spectrum palette, or I could choose a Spectrum WebSafe palette. But one of the options I have is to load a custom palette. So I will choose that option. And here is my swatches folder, and I have some swatches in there. So I have this one here, Garden Swimming Pool. So I shall open that one. And what it will do is it will load in that colour palette that it has loaded in. It's a swatches file made by Photoshop. So I have exported these colours from Photoshop to an Adobe Swatch Exchange format and then opened that up in Colour Schema Studio. So it limits the options I have available in the colour palette at the bottom to just the ones that I know I'm going to use in this project. My next step, as I'm using it with Pixelmator, would be to position this interface in such a way that when I access Pixelmator, I can see it, and then I can use this special customised palette in exactly the same way as I was using the options from the colour wheel. Just drag them up when I need them. If I want to add a colour to the foreground palette, then I make sure that that's selected first by pressing D. That activates my foreground colour. Then I would drag that up into there. There's my foreground colour selected, make sure. Then press X to switch to my background colour and choose a completely different colour for my background. So choose that green. And now if I press the X key, I switch between the bluish colour and the greenish colour. So that's how I can add dedicated colours to the foreground and background rather than just relying on those default ones. And this, of course, will work the other way. I've got colours in this image that I've used here that I selected from the colour palette. And it could well be that I would like to add those back to the colour palette and then exchange that with somebody else. And I can do that as well. What I need to do to do that is to get Colour Schema Studio active, move it to a place where I can see the colours that I would like to add to the right hand side of the interface. Use the eyedropper tool from within Colour Schema Studio and go and select the colour and then from within the Colour Schema Studio window, drag and drop that colour over to the right hand side to park it. And again for that magenta colour. So just click, drag, drop and it's saved.
Now, at the moment, that is not a saved palette. I have added my saved palette to the bottom of the window, but this range of colours on the right hand side are not saved. We can see untitled at the top of the window, so it's not saved. So it's a simple matter of saving that to the desktop. And I shall save that as Pixelmator Colours. Now what that has created is a Colour Schema Studio native file. That is not a swatches palette. What I need to do to do that is to export it. And in here I can then choose the export format that I need. So I'm going to choose ASE, Adobe Swatch Exchange. I shall leave it set to Pixelmator Colours and export it. And there is my file on the desktop. Now what I can do, the next time I come to work in, in um, Pixelmator and I need a custom to use a custom palette, is to go to Load Custom Palette, go and choose Pixelmator Colours and open it. And now I have the colours that I actually have over here as well. So that way I'm working with my palette. I'm working with the palette at the bottom of the window. If I want to work with it down the side of the window, then I open up my Pixelmator Colours my Colour Schema Studio file. The difference between the two. If I'm sharing with somebody who has Colour Schema Studio, I can share the native file. That gives them the benefit that they can edit the palette. If I'm sharing with somebody who doesn't have Colour Schema Studio, then I can share it as an ASE file and they could open that in Photoshop. They could work with it in a number of other ways. So one is a native file, the other is exchangeable. So that's the way that I'm working at the moment with Pixelmator in the absence of having a dedicated swatches palette. So I hope that helps you.